sociologists work, psychologists as well, the social sciences. So let's separate that first of all. Biological sex refers to your DNA, to your to your biology. Okay. Now, even with biological sex, there there is more than two. By the way, there there is biologically sometimes people that are in the middle. So let's throw that out there. Okay, that does happen. Okay. But we're going to focus on gender, right? Because this is not a biology class. This is a history class. This is a social studies class. And so we're going to focus on gender because gender is defined by society, and it's defined by the way someone identifies. Okay. And we don't describe it as male and female. It's masculine and feminine. It's a better way to describe it. And so we all have masculine and feminine traits, and it sort of is on a spectrum. Some people are more masculine. Guys tend to be more masculine, but not necessarily. And girls tend to be more feminine. But again, there's exception to those rules. And then there's probably a whole bunch of people maybe that are somewhere in the middle, and they can kind of identify. Really, it's a free country, however they want. Now, people get upset if you force them to kind of identify the, you know, the way you identify. Sometimes people get mad about that pronouns and all that good stuff. But again, that's not really the conversation we're having. We're more focused on how the girls in this, okay? How that happens through the socialization process. Which, if you look at this little thing, you can see that there are lots of influences. Your family's probably the biggest one. But your school, your peers, your religious group, media, the media you're consuming, right? All these things affect it. And then if you think about it from a very early age, where do you learn what it means to be a girl and a guy? And you said it. I want to put a little pink dress on, and I want to brush her hair and make her a little princess, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and where do you learn that? Well, these are the things that teach you that at a very early age. Like I said, they. Slap the pink blanket and the blue blanket. From that point forward, you know what? What is the first question usually people ask when it's a little baby? Is it a boy or a girl? And then all of a sudden, now you're going to treat that little baby differently now that you know whether it's a boy or a girl. Oh, it's a boy. Oh, he's got a strong grip. Look at that, look at that grip. Oh, it's a girl. Oh, she's so precious. Oh, look at her little dainty little fingers. So we unknowingly may treat that little baby girl differently as soon as we know what sex is. And we may not know this, but this accumulates over time as to how that person is treated. That affects their personality, affects their character, and affects who they are over time. The toys that they play with, right? The activities that they're involved with. You know, little girls do dance and gymnastics and maybe cheerleading, and maybe they do some sports as well. But eventually, the sports are already split. Some of the sports are co-ed. Soccer is more co-ed, but a lot of times it's split into girls and guys sports pretty early on. Right? Uh, the toy, like I said, the toys you play with. Right? And, and so I think some of this has certainly changed a little bit. But you know, guys don't play with dollies. They play with action figures. Right? So you don't buy Barbies for a little boy, do you? Maybe if you just just take a Barbie and put a sword in their hand, and now you're good. You're good. Little Dragon Slayer Barbie, and then. Boy